All right, so here we are back in my third and probably final uh, video on this subject. Um, past, past this next idea, um, you're going to need a, uh, a spline mesh uh, idea, like if you wanted to make like a, a curving type of a, a thing. And so I, I may make one after this doing something with the spline mesh. Um, th but that kind of differs from this idea. Uh, this idea is pretty much straight, uh, straight line, uh, walls or fences kind of an idea, and the spline mesh is more for me like roads, uh, things that are going to curve, uh, pipes, things like that. So I may do one on on pipes and stuff, but I think there's already a lot of uh, pipe videos out there, so I don't know that I need to do that. Um, you guys, let me know in the comments if you uh, if you want to see me do that uh, with my style. Um, but this might be my last one. We'll see. Uh, okay, so as you can see, I, I, I added another point and I turned the corner. And, and this doesn't follow along. And so we have to work that out now. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of this. Because this one works. Uh, and this one we're going to change to be work on corners. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and drag one of these in just so we can start to see what's going on as we go. All right, so I'm still going to use the same wall just to keep it simple. I'm going to add the wall. Okay, bricks material. Try some bricks on there just to give us something different to look at. Okay, so now I'm going to turn the corner and alt dragging off that last point. Okay, now you can see how the spline starts to curve, and we don't really want that. Um, and I'm going to actually go ahead and add one more point. All right, so we don't want the uh, spline to be curved like that. So I'm going to click on one, right click on it, say select all spline points. I'm going to go over here to my component area, pick my spline, which gives me this here, which is the type of spline. Now I have multiple selected, which you can see, I can change them all to linear and it'll straighten those lines out, which is exactly what we want. I would also, since these are 400 wide, I would change your grid snap value to 100, just so that you can have these at the exact uh, length that you need. Um, that's gonna come, uh, it's gonna be important later on, okay? All right, so let's go into the code for this and let's see what we need to do to make it turn the corner. The first thing we're gonna need is we're gonna need a couple of other uh, uh, variables and then we actually need to start calculating this rotation instead of just passing it on. Um, and uh, Okay, so a lot of what we need to do still centers around uh, the number of spline points. We have to do uh, stuff for the number of spline points. We still have to determine the uh, location at the spline point and, and get the distance, right? We still have to do this. We still need to know. Um, but where it starts to change is, is where we're putting the, the X, Y, and Z and the rotation. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and break this rotation. I'm going to split this one out just like we did. I'm going to go ahead and break these. Okay, and I'm going to add, I'm going to do my plus float to float because I know I'm going to need all these. Plus float to float. 
stack these all up. Same thing here, plus plus. Okay, because all these have to be calculated now. And plus. Go ahead and drive these in there. And do it. Split this. Drive these in there. Okay. Now, the way to get these values that we need. So we're not actually using this anymore. We're not going to use the repeat width here. So we can go ahead and get rid of this here. We can drive this one inside there and disconnect that one. So now these are all the same. What we do need is we need to drag off that spline and get the location and distance along the spline. Okay, So we're going to get location at the distance along the spline. Okay. Now we can break this out, and we'll use that in a minute. And then we need to get the rotation at the distance along the spine. So we're going to say get rotation at distance along the spine. Because each time we, we, we travel, each time we add another wall, we're at a further distance along the spine. Okay. So now we're going to drag this out. We're going to break the rotator. All right, so now this is what's going to give us our values that we need to plug in over here. So we're going to add these. Add this. This. And add this. All right. It's pretty simple so far. All right, now. The next thing we need, we need to be able to say, okay, what distance do we need to have these at? And I struggled a lot with trying to take some value from here and some value from here and add them together and add local variables. Uh, and it, in the end, what I did was I created a variable called loop count. And I made that an integer. And then in the beginning of it all, like each time, each time for each repeating item, I need to reset this loop count. I need it to be zero each time I start with a new item. If that makes sense. So we're going to just initialize that to zero. And then each time I add an item, I'm going to increment this. So I'm going to get this and I'm going to say ink, just increment in. I'm going to add one to it. Okay. That's all I have to do. Now, every time a piece is added, I'll, my loop will kind of go up. And now all I have to do is go over here and take this loop count times it by my repeating width. And that will give me my distance along the spline that I need to figure out. Right now, we should be able to compile this and save it. And we should go back into the world and see our building sides. Okay, so here's a good example of why you need to have the spline points at the exact location. This has to be exactly at 400. Otherwise, it tries to add one more piece of building and then 300 pixels later, or 300 centimeters later, it starts to add the one down the, the, the chain. So I could either drag this here, move this spline point here so that it's straight, Okay. And I can alt drag off of this one, start building a new wall. 
right to the edge. Okay. I'll drag this way. Maybe get to the end. And now it should line up perfectly. I'll drag this way. And I get a completed building. All right, you can play. It's got the building. And it doesn't get any easier making a building than that. Okay. So now there's a couple other things we can do. We can cover up these corners. Okay, so to do that, we're going to go to my repeatable. I'm going to add one. And let's say we want to use the box. Oops, yeah, the box is fine. We'll call this, we'll use the cube. Okay. We're going to give it the same brick material. Oops. Brick was clay old. Okay, so the, the scale might not be right, which is okay. And we're going to transform. We're going to scale this up. Uh, so we don't want to use the cube. No, we don't want the cube. How about cylinder? That's maybe a little better. It still stretches. So you probably want to make your own assets with the proper UVs because as you scale things up, uh, things are going to get kind of weird. Uh, but we can make this smaller. You get my point here in a second. Three. All right. So we can actually we could do it like this and add a couple. Cover up that corner or add some decorative piece on the corner. I think that's going to be 150 halfway. So let's just stretch this now. So you probably want to make some better material, either something triplanar. I should go to 3.1. Just to stick it up past the thing. You can see that Z fighting. But that covers our gaps in our corners a little bit. Looks a little better. Alright, and so there are problems with this. Okay, one of the problems is now if I wanted to add that wall sconce, I'm not going to be able to. Okay, because I'm not calculating. Uh, the Z properly, or the X and the Y. So I could push this in the X, push it out in the Y, okay, rotate it 90 degrees like we did before, push it up in the world. But you can see, put this right on the wall here, it's on the wall everywhere. These are oriented the same way. But over here, they're still pushed in the X. Okay. Here they're pushed in the X. Here it's still pushed in the X. Right. So it's pushing it off the wall. Here they're on the inside still. Because it's not being pushed out this way in the Y, which would be a negative number in the Y. Right. So if I move this to negative 10. You see them push out the other side. So this is like a, a world. It's not a local transform. It's a world transform. And so that's just not going to work with this idea anymore. But it's one of those things where to fix this would be uh, infinitely harder. Because now you have to detect that you've turned a corner and that you're heading down this direction. And so then X and Y have to swap. Um, it also doesn't take into account, I guess it would be easy enough if you only had 90 degree angles, uh, but with this system, you don't have to keep 90 degree angles. You could have different angles. Okay. It might be difficult to get these things to work at that angle. Um, 
but you could have diagonal angles. Of course, I probably wouldn't want to be snapped at 100 either. Uh, that's going to make it a lot harder to get this thing to work and look good. So you'd, you'd probably turn off that, uh, that 100 snapping, but you could make virtually any size, any angle, at the right one. So it's not flawless. You know, it works better with everything being square. All right, so that is it for this video. Um, let's take one more look at the, the code here. It's basically just the repeating items for each loop. My loop count so I can calculate the width along the spine, spline, or the distance along the spline. Um, I'm setting all my instant stuff up. And I go down for basically the number of splines so that I can calculate the distance in between each and how many pieces I need to add based on that di distance. And then I'm adding an instance and I'm calculating the X, Y, and Z and the rotation based on where that distance is, where that location is along the spline. All right, so that's it. If you got any questions or comments, please leave them in the, in the comment section and uh, let me know what else you want to see. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching.